the Ultimate Fighter Season 31 is starting to get good, man. I am so, so excited for the rest of the season. I'm going to spoil the episode that just happened, which was the episode which Kurt Holobar and Lee Hammond just fought. So if you haven't seen the episode and you want to, uh, maybe leave now because I'm going to get into the spoilers early and I'm going to potentially spoil the next episode as well because I've got a, actually a prediction of what happens in that fight based off a little snippet we got for the season earlier in the season. But I'm telling you now, it took a long time. It took about four or five episodes to go. I think it was six episodes right now. And Tough 31 is finally getting good. It took so, so long. And I'm going to quickly uh, recap episode number six because that's where it starts to really heat up. And I'm going to talk about the future of the show because, my goodness, this season is going to get good. And I really cannot wait for it. As you guys may or may not know, uh, Kurt Holobar did defeat Lee Hammond. Lee Hammond was Conor McGregor's guy. Conor McGregor trained with him since Lee Hammond was 17 years old. So Lee Hammond's trained with McGregor for 10 years. And let alone this, Conor McGregor's team is 0-5 against Michael Chandler's team. Lee Hammond goes out there, wins the first round, completely gasses out after the first round, and then submits, loses by submission to a guillotine with only about 90 seconds to go. And Kurt Holobar and Michael Chandler go 6-0 over Conor McGregor's team. And as you can tell, Conor McGregor does not take losing very well. You can see when he fought Dustin Poirier twice, he did not take those losses well. He hasn't take the six, taken the six losses to Michael Chandler very well whatsoever. And he's getting angry, man. He's getting mad. Michael Chandler pointed out to... Conor McGregor that he's not there for his team, which is true. That's what I've been saying the whole time throughout the season. Michael Chandler is there for his team, and Conor McGregor is not. Michael Chandler is at every single weigh-in. Conor McGregor doesn't even show up to the weigh-ins, you know? And, uh, <laughs> dude, like, Michael Chandler's just a better coach, and it is showing in these fights because, I guess, on paper, in at least some of the fights, you would expect the prospects to have beaten the veterans, but the veterans have beaten the prospects every single time. And I have seen a lot of people saying, like, of course the veterans are going to beat the prospects. Like, they're just better. It's like this and this and that. The prospects are meant to be better than the veterans. The veterans have proven that they're not UFC level, or at least they weren't when they're in the UFC. Maybe they're better now. But, like, the prospects are meant to actually be better than the veterans, you know? They don't want a UFC veteran, a guy that's been cut from the UFC, to win the season of the show. And it seems like that's exactly what's about to happen. Now, with all of that being said, though... What happened at the end of the episode is where things got really, really good, man. And this is where it starts to get very exciting. So obviously, after going 0-6 to Michael Chandler and Michael Chandler talking all that to, 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 Michael, to Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor starts going, good job, Team Bellator. Good job, because obviously Chandler was a champion at Bellator. He's got Ryan Bader. Ryan Bader, sorry, who's like the heavyweight champion of Bellator in his corner and his, in his coaching space. So Conor McGregor's kind of like picking at picking the Team Bellator, because obviously Bellator is not as good as the UFC. But um, Michael Chandler kind of says, I was there for my fighters in the weigh-ins, and they do this face-off, and like right close, like nose to nose. And then you can see... He shoves, he gets angry, man. Conor McGregor loses it. And he pushes and he shoves Michael Chandler. And oh my goodness, dude, Conor McGregor is not happy, man. And at the end as well, which I think maybe won't be talked enough, now, enough Michael Chandler goes and high fives Conor McGregor's team. And he says to them, I would have been there for you. I'm sorry you have to be on his team. And it doesn't seem to be much like, no, we want to be on Conor McGregor's team or this. They're kind of like, yeah. Yeah, I wish I was on Michael Chandler's team. That is so fucking bad. Dude, like, my Conor McGregor's team, like, all of a sudden doesn't seem to want anything to do with Conor McGregor. It's crazy, man. And the show is about to get good because coming up in the next episode is Landon Quinones taking on Jason Knight. And if you guys know anything about the show, if you've been watching the show, one thing that hasn't really been highlighted enough is Landon Quinones has a beef. And this is where I'm going to spoil the next episode. So if you if you don't want the next episode potentially spoiled, like this is a prediction I don't actually know for a fact, but Landon Canones has a beef with Ruse about Roberts. And this is where the spoiler is going to come in. In one of the little extracts to sort of hype up the future of the season, Ruse about Roberts can be seen standing up where the team kind of stands saying, I will knock you out. I will fight you right now. And he we don't know who he's talking to, but he says, I will fight you right now. And Ruse about Roberts has a beef 
with Landon Kanonis. They do not like each other. So I am assuming, this is the spoiler, I think Landon Kanonis is actually going to beat Jason Knight. There's going to be a big thing. Conor McGregor is going to get all excited because he's finally got a win. Like he's 1-6 all of a sudden. And Roosevelt Roberts and, and Landon Kanonis are going to start yapping. And Roosevelt Roberts is going to lash out and say, I will knock you out. I will fight you right now. And that's where it's going to happen. I think we're going to see Roosevelt Roberts versus Landon Kanonis if Landon Kanonis wins. And I think he does. I genuinely think that Landon Kanonis is about to win because Roosevelt Roberts doesn't like Kanonis. And why would he say, I will fight you, I will knock you out right now to his teammate? He wouldn't do that. So, man, that's something to keep your eye out for, man. I think next, I think next week on Tough, we're going to see Landon Kanonis get the first win for Conor McGregor's team. And more importantly... We're going to see a little bit of an altercation between Roosevelt Roberts and Landon Canones, and maybe an altercation between Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler. However, if you do look at the final fights, all of these guys have fought except for Landon Canones and Jason Knight. They're the last two to fight each other. You go to Bantamweight, the last two to fight on Bantamweight, I believe it's Rico Descalio and Hunter Azure. So I think Hunter Azure probably wins that. So that might be the only win that Conor McGregor's team gets, because if I'm not mistaken, I think Rico Scalia is like 35 years old. He's 36. 36 years old. He's beaten a couple of good guys, to be fair, but, you know, we, we know we know how good um, Hunter Azure is. Hunter Azure is actually a pretty good fighter. He wasn't released too early. He did go on a two-fight losing streak. I think it... Uh, anyway, the point is... Um, the point is, I think that uh, Hunter Azure is going to win his next fight, so... I think this might be the only win for Team Rikuga coming next week. But to kind of talk about it, if you haven't been watching Tough 31, you should start watching now. It's about to start getting good, man. And I think if Team Rikuga gets a win, oh, it's going to get good. It's going to get good. And I genuinely cannot wait to uh, to watch it. I loved this episode. I tweeted out 20 minutes into the episode that it was the best episode I've seen so far. Now with the beef at the end, now that there's a lot of tension between the two teams. Now that there's tension between... Uh, Conor McGregor and his own team and also another extract from the next episode was that Conor McGregor was hard sparring with I believe one of his team members and he knocks them down with like a body kick like he's going too hard on his team members he's hurting his team members so oh dude it's gonna get good I'm telling you guys if you haven't been watching tough because maybe you don't like tough or maybe you watched the first two episodes you thought it sucked watch it now it's gonna get good watch the sixth episode if you haven't already or at least just watch the fight and then the end of the sixth episode because you maybe don't want to watch the filler at the start but oh my goodness dude it is good it is a good good um show it's gonna be fun it's really genuinely is very very fun and um i, I enjoyed it a lot i think episode seven which i or maybe episode eight is gonna be the future episode is gonna be good like i'm i'm hyped i'm hyped I'm ready to go. Like, look, Tough 31. Tough, tough is back. Tough is good. For the first time in, in many seasons. And it took multiple episodes into Tough 31. So, I'm starting to lose my voice because I'm sick. So, I'm going to end the video pretty abruptly now. But, um, <coughs> sorry. UFC 290 predictions are all out. I'm going to be doing a UFC 290 live fight companion on my YouTube channel as well for that card. International Fight Week. It's going to be good. And I'll be live streaming during the card. That, that's what a fight companion is. <laughs> and, uh... Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel as well. I try to make daily content. I'm sick right now and I'm making daily content. So uh, with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please do like the video. Please subscribe and leave a comment if, you, if you've got something to say. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching.